Deep it, deep it, deep it. You know, it's another great sport. Mm -hmm. Rugby. Played rugby with your mom. Hey, welcome back to our stupid rags with Dean Corbin. I got rug burns from playing rugby with your mom on a rug. And you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, Twitter Juicy, juicy Content. Say, Bang! Follow us on the first huge in the description below. Today we're acting to a uh, inside the scene. Oh, cool! But this is with LJP, and it's the one shot from the diaries. The diaries. Yeah, so cool. I believe he's he's breaking down the ten minute or so single shot. That awesome. He did awesome. If not, that's what he should be doing. Awesome. Um, but yes, my favorite. That was my favorite part of the film. Um, if you haven't seen our review, it's up. Go watch it. Yeah. Uh, I'll. I'll Link it as well as a couple of other of his films uh, in the video. Um, yeah, sir, if you're watching this, I'd love to interview you. I'd love to talk to you. Um, so yeah, so this should be fun. I hope he, I hope he goes deep, deep into the the scene. Um, this is that, great. That was an extremely difficult scene to pull off. Very, so, very. It'll hard. be fun to watch him talk about it. Here we go. Also, this is the first time we're seeing him. Yeah. Hi, my name is Lijojo Spellishiri. I am here to talk about uh, the climax of my film Angamali Diaries. It's 11 minute. Uh, Long single take. Do, do, dena, do, dena, pajinde, bhargayura. Uh, when you start the scene, uh, you can. That was great. You can see that when there's a fireworks trolley which is there, which is a normally the clubs there uh, in Angamali they organize these fireworks uh, during uh, church festivals. Uh, so uh, it's a firework thing which is going to about the start. That's what you're seeing. So it's it's basically getting the audience to the scene. Basically, when like, you, you don't feel like you're watching a cinema. I mean, that was that was the idea behind uh, this long tape. So what we did was uh, initially uh, it was like in the daytime we went with our actors, the DOP, and our our basic core team. So that uh, street was uh, like empty in the morning. So we just. Uh, structured the entire choreography of the sequence. So where to stop, where to move, uh, I mean, what should happen where, where should the, uh, the fight uh, happen. Up. All this we, we started improvising with only these actors. So basically it was not even a rehearsal with the crowd. So we didn't know I mean, how it will be when the crowd come in in the evening. So we just practiced it like that when the camera movement with a with a normal phone we practiced it. When the evening when the crowd came in, so the, the real fear and the real hang of the entire thing we got. It wasn't that easy like as it looked in the in the afternoon like a empty street. The best thing happened in the shoot was uh, movie ten. Movie ten is an alternative for steady cam. Mm. Uh, steady cam, uh, steady cams we used to use for to get a, a moving shot in a steady form. But now we have uh, much more uh, easier equipment to handle. Movie fifteen is much more uh, compact in terms cool. of handling. So it's uh, since it was a very long take, like eleven minutes. So uh, the cam weighs around like two uh, more than two kgs, and mm -hmm. this equipment again. So it basically you see the work that cinematographers around, uh, do. Mm -hmm. uh, four, four, four to five kgs of uh, weight, and which uh, the camera boom and, operators uh, as well. Only. So was, the initial in ten minutes, too. it was like normally moving with the characters. <laughs> Backing up. People making sure he doesn't fall. He just did a seamless yep. turn. One of the most common things that's said to him in the last hit is the end. But then halfway through it gets into a brawl and uh, when the characters start running and uh, that is a difficult part. It is like you have to follow the, the character and he, uh, the character should not go out of the frame. And you are moving through massive crowds. 
who are not at all controllable. Like you can't, you don't have any control on the, the crowd. They will, they will just move in and out. There is this one instance where you can see the camera hit on someone's uh, shoulder and uh, so what happens in the, uh, the equipment is like uh, the camera is uh, basically hung in the center of uh, the equipment and uh, so once it is hit on uh, an object it will it will take a while to balance itself uh, to the center the crowd was stretching from one point of the street to the other point of the street so we had these loudspeakers uh, which was uh, hoisted in each post lamp and so whichever instructions we give so we, we knew that the, the, the crowd uh, has uh, the characters like are spot. Okay, yeah. from this now. house to that house, yeah. this place to this place. So we'll instruct it like that. It's now we, you, you be attentive when uh, the characters are moving to your place. They're coming please, to your place now, right? Please don't look into the camera. So much the, the camera into is the, coming to you and not let big uh, single shot, shot like this. With this uh, hit on the camera. I mean, we have to cut the shot if, if you hit on the camera. Initially, we had planned a stunt artist who will come out of the fire and will fall in front of. So basically, when uh, both these guys will run into the fire, uh, like uh, run to the close vicinity of fire, they will have a fight. Marangoti Sijo, who's the uh, negative uh, guy, uh, he's kicked into the fire. So when uh, after he being kicked into the fire, when we literally uh, go round the main guys and come behind uh, the main guys, so that we'll see the stunt artist coming from the fire uh, outside. So that was a plan. So but it didn't work like that because. Uh, it looked so odd when the stunt artist did it. It wasn't looking real at all. So we had to remove uh, the fire artist and till the kick we shot and uh, we, we revolved uh, into the fireball. So which we later, later added a layer of fire and uh, uh, structure passing through the fire later in the, oh, in the film. So finally, uh, I remember when um, we finished the shot, uh, DOP was literally when he just fell down. Like because he, he couldn't hold the cam, he couldn't... That thing's heavy. Up. We're going to talk about shot, that in a minute. It, it was like all, like we were breathing in and out, like so heavy. Everyone. I, I still find a lot of flaws, but when I, I find it like, this is what the best uh, we could make it on that day. And uh, yeah. I was so happy. Directors and I said, uh, flaws. great, I think we've got it. <laughs> How many times, like, how many mess ups there were, and how many times they had to run this 11 minute scene? And uh, if you like this episode of Inside a Scene, uh, please subscribe to uh, Film Companion for more videos. And how excited they were in the thought of, I can't wait for you know, you finish that, and you're like, I can't wait to see that shot. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see what that looks like. Yeah, like the DP just fell down. So, um, if you've never been on a working set, one of the most common, common things you'll ever hear said to the cinematographers or the director of photography, and if you don't know the difference, a lot of films have more than one cinematographer on it, like Ridley Scott will have seven cinematographers working seven cameras because he can have that kind of a budget. Yeah. So they're all cinematographers, but there's one person who's in charge of all the cinematography that works hand in hand with the director, and that's the DP or DOP, director of photography. They're the head cinematographer. And they're usually the ones that are doing the, the main shots. And the most, one of the most common things on set you'll hear said is somebody saying to the cinematographers or especially the DP, you okay? <laughs> because they're, first of all, they're almost always wearing gloves. <clears throat> they're almost always wearing knee things. They're wearing their comfortable shoes. They've always got the camera strapped to them in some way, shape or form. And so they're in positions. If there's a shot in a bus and you're just seeing two people talk on a bus, you don't realize that for the whole day, the cinematographer has been on the floor, they've put a mattress on the floor, and they've been holding the camera like this in their chair and making sure the shot's the way it needs, and then they're like, okay, do you need a break? It's like, and they, the cinematographer will be here and go, I just need a bottle of water. Yep. And they're just sitting here like this. Okay, all right, we're just gonna get this one more time. That's the life of a director of photography. Yeah, and often <laughs> that person has sometimes it's why it's great if you, you like they're friends already then i think that's why a lot of directors do bring on their own yeah they're very DP. close relationships with because DPs. a lot of times if they're not those two can butt heads because obviously the director he wants his vision obviously but this guy he's like okay i know what i'm right. doing i know what looks good right i was explaining this to indrani last <clears throat> night we were watching uh, the uh, 
Sorkin's thing, the, the, yeah. the Chicago 7. And she was asking me about the director of photography versus the camera people. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's a reason why. And she, she said, who is it that's responsible for the shot looking so nice? Is it the director of photography or the director? And I said, ultimately, mm -hmm. it's the director. Mm -hmm. But that's why you have directors who use the same cinematographers and DPs all the time. Because they trust Be them. Yeah. They trust them. And what will happen is they'll be working on a shot. And very often, the DP will go, hey, why don't we do this? And the director will go, love it. Let's go with your idea. Yeah, I think most of the time, I mean, obviously there's some brilliant directors that do what they want to do, but I often think it's best to, obviously film is probably one of the most collaborative art forms there is. Yeah. It takes so many people for it's something to work beautiful. and work perfectly, but make sure you let the artist be the artist. Right. Let them, like they know they're in their position for a reason. Correct. And so it's your job as a director to accommodate everybody. You hired them it's, for a reason. And that's why I love being on a set. Like, mm -hmm. even, if, even if you're just doing background work, I love just sitting in a chair and watching because everybody is a specialist at what they do. Mm -hmm. So like, I love just watching a grip set up the lighting for a particular scene mm -hmm. and how they'll be working and they'll notice how in the last shot, that light was framed this way, but the so background person bumped it so now they have to reframe that shot, and it's just Rips the expertise. Great. Like the header scene I did, um, my friend Valerie, she directed the scene for me, and the, we actually had a um, a DP and a grip, okay, uh, because they were her friends. And if you didn't know, who, the grips are the ones that they literally they're taking the things they're and setting up lighting. all of the lights that have scaffolding and bit and sandbags. And oftentimes they have clips and clamps that they put filters on. Mm -hmm. So, and we did that at the YouTube space. So the uh, YouTube space is a phenomenal place Beautiful. where it's free for YouTube creators, which is a wonderful thing And because of COVID has not been able to be used for months. Anyway, yes, <laughs> um, but we set up for hours. Like I wasn't doing any, I, they would just, they asked my opinion sometimes like, what do you, they asked me what I was looking for. Cause I had a vision of right. what I wanted. Right. But it was just a, it, it's a, it's a black studio box and they made it look incredible. Like the lighting, it looked like this deep void with lighting going like they can do incredible things and, and the it's crew. Really let them be themselves and that, I'm assuming that's what he does. And you hear all the time about actors having to show up, like I know the crew for Save the Show Blackish, the, the actors have to show up sometimes. They have to get up at four in the morning and be to set by like 5.30 or six and it's but usually- they've been a, there since it's, Yeah, and it's usually a 12 or 14 hour day for the actors, but it's oftentimes a 16 or 18 hour day for the, crew. For, for the whole crew. That by the time you show up as an actor, you may have an early call, but as you're going, you're seeing the crew working who not only got there before you this morning, they were there as you walked away and said goodnight everybody and they still had a couple of hours of work to do as you were going At least home. SAG in, in Hollywood, actors are very coddled. Well, yeah. and obviously we have a union that, that makes the, sure of Well, that. And, and they have a union too, but the difference being is because so much is, is resting on the performance of the actor and that if the actor isn't rested and ready, and it, which what actors do for eight out of nine hours on a set is just sit around and watch the crew do their work. Most of it's waiting. It's just sitting and waiting. Yeah. Yeah. But love these. I watch these, these all day long. Thanks. I would love to talk to the man. Yep. Uh, I was hoping his new film would be out already. Yeah, me too. Um, so hopefully. And I want the VR stuff he's yeah. been talking about. That would be so cool. Yeah. So let's know more that we can react to down below. Ha ha ha!